The Hyperloop, once hailed as the pinnacle of transportation innovation, now stands at a crossroads, hovering between revolutionary success and inevitable failure. Its journey from concept to execution has been fraught with challenges, raising doubts about its feasibility and practicality. While enthusiasts believe it is too early to call it a failure, skeptics cry otherwise. But both sides have compelling arguments, which is why it is important to approach this topic with a balanced perspective. In this video, we will discuss the reasons as to why the Hyperloop may be doomed to never happen. The Hyperloop was always a crazy man's ambitious gamble, with overwhelming odds stacked against it. Some may say that the signs of its inevitable failure were all over it. Or were they? The roots of the Hyperloop trace back to magnetic levitation technology, an idea that endured skepticism for decades before materializing into practical applications. Early visionaries proposed the concept in the 19th century, met with considerable doubt similar to contemporary scrutiny faced by the Hyperloop. It would take decades for scientists to begin experimenting with electromagnetic suspension systems. Despite initial resistance, maglev technology eventually saw success, notably in Japan, China and Germany. However, its global adoption remained limited due to various challenges, including high costs and safety concerns highlighted by a tragic accident in 2006. All in all, it took over a century with lots of ups and downs companies failing and billions of dollars of investment for this technology to come to life, and skepticism never left its side. At the heart of the Hyperloop's technical challenge lies the quest for unparalleled speed and efficiency. While maglev trains have achieved impressive velocities, they are hindered by aerodynamic drag, demanding substantial energy. Power consumption can be calculated using the following formula, where the drag coefficient is multiplied by the frontal cross-section of the train times velocity cubed times air density divided by 2. At 100 km an hour, energy consumption is about 55 kW. At 400, power consumption increases by a factor of 64, from 55 to 3.5 MW. Any speed above that calls for a dedicated nuclear power plant to power the track. It doesn't take long for one to realize the connection in between maglev and the hyperloop. A maglev inside a near vacuum tube, almost completely eliminating drag. What this formula shows us is that density and energy have a direct relationship. If air density drops by a factor of 10, so does energy requirements. However, speeds above 400 km an hour still need considerable energy. Though at 800 km an hour energy consumption is only 2.8 MW, at 1600 km an hour power consumption goes through the roof, reaching 22 MW. This is the very reason air vacuum is so important. If we decrease air density 100 times, then energy requirements drop significantly, from 22 to only 2.2 MW. On paper, it is completely plausible. However, in practice, things aren't so simple. No doubt a lot of energy can be spared with a near vacuum tube. However, while you gain efficiency on one end, extreme problems appear. The Hyperloop's promise of ultra-fast travel comes at a steep cost, both figuratively and literally. Estimates suggest a substantial financial investment, surpassing even the high expenses associated with maglev infrastructure. The necessity of vacuum tube further inflates those costs, posing a formidable barrier to widespread adoption. The energy required to remove air from one cubic meter in one minute is about 1.6 kilowatts. Considering a tube of 4 meters in diameter and the energy required comes down to 20 megawatts per kilometer. Since the goal is to connect places as far as at least 30 kilometers, we are talking about 600 megawatts. Then again, one could argue that removing air to near vacuum needs to be done sporadically, as the train needs only to pass an airlock system where only the length of the train needs to be vacuumed. And of course, tubing everything will have an astronomical impact on the cost. The Japanese Chuo Shinkansen maglev line is expected to cost in between 100 to 130 million dollars per kilometer of track, totally in between 20 to 60 billion dollars. 
add the necessity of wrapping everything inside a vacuum tube, and it is safe to say that it will increase the cost by at least 30%. The cost of implementation per kilometer could easily go from 130 to 200 million dollars. Lastly, we need to consider accidents. Any cracks on the tube may prove to be a death sentence for the passengers. Imagine this. The train is at its maximum speed and the tube breaks at any point. The air rushing into the pipes, consequently hitting the train, would pretty much feel like hitting a wall at 3000 km an hour. Inertia from subsequent carriages would sandwich each other and everyone inside would die instantly. While any accident is horrific, we must keep in mind that it can all be mitigated by precise engineering and implementation of new, more resistant materials, such as graphene. As we consider the Hyperloop's prospect, we are confronted with a fundamental question. Is it a revolutionary leap forward or a doomed endeavor? While the Hyperloop embodies human ambition and technological innovation, its path to success is loaded with obstacles. Skepticism, technical complexity and economic pragmatism converge to cast doubt on its feasibility. Yet, history reminds us that breakthroughs often emerge from adversity, and perseverance may yet pave the way for the Hyperloop's triumph. That and another century of development. What do you think? Revolutionary or doomed to never happen.